Fort Chippewan is one of the hamlets in the middle of nowhere. I believe the nearest city or town is Fort Mackay, with at least 227 kilometers in distance. The only alternate road between the hamlet and the nearest city is a winter road, but that is usually made every winter and lasts between 50 to 100 days each winter. Sometimes it depends on the day, sometimes it's it's probably longer, sometimes it's, it's shorter. It depends on the year and you know the amount of time it's cold and it snows, right? Another alternate route would be going north through a small road heading towards Fort Smith. From Fort Smith, hey, head east bound to Hay River and proceed going south if you want to make it to Edmonton, right? The winter road consists of 200 kilometers of road between Fort Chippewan and Fort McMurray. This road consists of four river crossings in fact, the ice has to be at least one meter thick for a commercial cargo vehicle to cross the river. Don't think for one second that the roads are nice and beautiful. Hell no, nah, man. The roads are bumpy, rough. The tractor was twerking out of existence from the video that I was, you know, shown. Now, before obviously, you know, crossing, there are a couple important rules and recommendations that you should follow up. One of the rules, you know, that was shown on the sign here was to start off the max weight you should be crossing and you should read before passing on these, uh, what do you call the ice river bridges is 45,000 kg kilograms uh, roughly about 99,000 um, pounds or 100 let's let's say 100,000 pounds but you know the limit wouldn't be that cell phone service is limited but you know through phone calls with uh you know my father and the service was, was all right i believe it was just certain sections in the row where it just he didn't have an uh, uh like good service maybe but some parts of the road were, were good. So with uh, rule number two is like, you know, be prepared to lose connection or any cell phone service, you know, have like a like a backup plan. Number three, do not proceed in windy conditions. I feel like it would be the reason in the case that truck, you know, falls over to the side of the road and it could like cause catastrophic damage, cracking the ice. Another reason in case you don't have grip on the ice road and the wind is just taking you for a ride. Let, let's say you're like driving, you know, towards south and the wind is, is heading like east to west now that that shit is taking you horizontally it's taking you for a ride man sideways so i guess you know maybe that could be one of the reasons maybe there's another reason for it for keep right all the times we all know that you know we don't want to stop traffic so we should let them through this is a little weird one no services for 200 kilometers so there are no bathrooms, no gas stations, no rest stops. So if you want to pee, you have to wait until you get there or pee while driving. I don't know, man, because you won't be able to stop. From what I was told, you won't, like, there isn't that many stops. There is no uh, Flying J. There's no gas stations nearby. The only parts that you, you got, like, distance to stop is, like, a, a small little parking area, like a little emergency stop roadside pavement. But, you know, from what I was told, it was, like, covered in, in, in ice. No, not ice, uh, snow and stuff like that. Pop told me there was was only two roadside stops within those 200 kilometers of distance man. distance like that's like from from calgary to edmonton you know or like uh can i'm not sure the distance but yeah number six emergency kit i believe it is one of those kits that are for you know survival with like a med kit food supplies common survival supplies that you will know to you know to make a fire or a tent it would depend on what you buy at the store but i believe like uh what was it canadian tire has it no i don't know which one sells like uh tents like that survival kids or something like that but you you have to specify on the store right seven no parking on the road or ice bridge pretty obvious do not want to stop traffic or stop in the middle of ice bridge you know too much wake a crack it ship is going down you know you swimming for for your life a big important one is no b trains or super bees the max weight for one trailer with the trident axle is twenty four thousand kg but in this video we got dual tires so definitely seventeen thousand kg plus adding the weight of the truck it definitely does not exceed the weight limit of course obeying all speed limits while in the ice bridge crossing there is a certain effect when you drive through really fast and if the ice is terrible and bumpy the bridge starts to create the certain type of waves and the ice would start to wobble up and down so the max speed is five kilometers while in the ice bridge so just put it on low 11 now these are a couple of my suggestions like if you can you can do it do not drive alone that is an essential have a partner from the same company with you in a convoy or you know take somebody with you in the truck you know just so you're not alone you know so you have a helping hand out there in case something an emergency happens you're just there while somebody's helping you out let's say you, you know you get stuck in between the wheel or something like that. then that other partner that you took with you or that convoy helper or something like that could help you out just a suggestion because it seems that there there isn't a lot of cars passing by 
who knows how long it will take for the next vehicle to pass by or an emergency vehicle or anything like that even if you have you know caught somebody who who knows how long that could take them to get there and you know what if it's like a life or death situation you know what i mean uh 12 i would really suggest to not pass on through after 5 p.m nighttime in alberta is around that time and it could be dangerous due to one of the fact that yeah you know, what if your lights are terrible what if you cannot see on the road animals are crossing by you know what i mean and you know you end up hitting up an animal middle of the dark it totals your vehicle and you cannot keep on driving through you're gonna wait a long time for your vehicle to be towed up or something like that or to be inspected by a mechanic so it's better you know just to drive while there's daylight and you can see everything that's going around you know in, in your side of zone right number 13 fuel up grab some supplies in a city nearby i suggest for mcmurray or for mckay before getting onto the winter road just to be ready for anything because there are no regular patrols and stuff happens sometimes you do not want to end up in a pile of snow or stuck on the snow without fuel it is a big essential both for cars and semi tractors it is very needed in the case where you cannot move and you have the vehicle to keep you warm now you know the experience with my father was phenomenal he loved it was intrigued by it and i believe this was his first time crossing an ice river bridge obviously nothing compared to the ones in the northern territories or alaska but still just as dangerous who knows what the heck could happen this experience taught him a valuable lesson and that is one to never come back again or else the truck will fall Part. you know like like bumblebee falls apart in that uh one movie in transformer something like that man but he would like to come back with like a a truck where he knows it's reliable but his you know is, is getting old right plus he, he does his own maintenance so it, it's not like he got a, a shop available where they could just fix the truck every time he gets you know on a saturday night that's the end of the video man that's everything for today you know see y'all on the next one todo se quedó así calculando, dice calculating, 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 porque no. Bueno, ya salimos. Continuamos.